Hi guys, this is Nick. I'm back talking about your next lesson in JavaScript coding. This is the second part of our first lesson, which is uh, the first one was the chicken rain where you first did that activity. Now you're gonna move on to a little bit more complicated. We're gonna talk about using the agent today. Okay, the agent is your little character that you may have seen appear in the previous activity. We didn't use it then, but we are gonna use it now. Uh, I'll show you uh, how to set up your world again in those other lessons. So for today, we're just gonna jump right on in. Uh, I'm gonna go back into my Minecraft world. You'll see that I've got my world set up at the moment. Okay, I can see, you know, bring up my inventory. Um, you might find that your world has a few additional characters. Um, if they're getting in your way, you can type in a kill command to just get rid of them. So you just open up your chat window type in slash kill at E, and that'll get rid of a lot of your characters, okay? Um, you might need to do it twice just to get rid of everything, okay? It does get rid of a lot of things for you. So now you've got your nice big world available again, so we'll jump right back into our code. Uh, you hopefully remember that to do your coding, you're gonna type C to open up your code builder. I'm gonna press a new project. Uh, this one is gonna be called Agent Tower. And don't forget that we only want our JavaScript code enabled, okay? So once I click Create, we're going to generate our world. Okay, um, I showed you in the previous lesson that I want everyone to try to do as much typing as possible. I'm just going to rush ahead and I'm going to put that player on chat command in there for us and give myself some big space, okay? But everything else I'm going to do uh, by typing out. So this chat command today this is going to be called the tower. So there's, first thing, we have to do a setup first for our agent. We have to do tell him that every time he moves, he's gonna be able to place a block. We have to give him a block to actually use to place that. And if there's something in front of it already, he has to get rid of that, okay? Now that becomes complicated, and you'll see why in, in a later part of the video. Okay, so the beginning setup looks like this. First of all, we need our agent to appear where we are. We want our tower to start where we're building. So the first command you need is agent.teleport to player. Okay, that'll allow you to start building exactly where you're currently standing and your agent will come right to you. Okay, the next one after that you need is going to be an agent.set assist. Oops, set assist. There we go. Um, and I'm pushing tab to populate the rest of that data by the way. And we want place on move, so that one's correct, that's good. But obviously we don't want it to be false, we did need it to be true, because we do want him to place something every time the agent moves. All right, the next one is gonna be agent.setAssist again, but instead of place on move, we're gonna get rid of anything that's already in their way. And you can see I've got destroy obstacles. Okay, so I'm gonna choose destroy obstacles, and I'm gonna change that to true as well. The final setup we need is to give the agent an item. So we're gonna do set item. The automatic default is to give it grass. I don't want grass right now, I want sandstone. So I'm gonna replace that with sandstone. Uh, the next parameter there, or what we call an argument in JavaScript, the next argument is how many blocks of sandstone the agent's gonna need, because you need to be able to give it enough to be able to do something. So I'm gonna change that to 64. Now, those familiar with Minecraft will know that you've got an inventory where you've got lots of slots, slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, and you can put a whole bunch of different materials in there, different blocks. Maybe think of it like a mailbox, the first mailbox, the second mailbox, and so forth. Well, we've got to, we're gonna put sandstone into the first mailbox. Now, that's the one that we want him to be using. Okay, so what I've what I set up just now is the ability to teleport to us and then place and destroy anything in front and replace it with sandstone. So I'm gonna make my agent just do one simple movement right now. I'm gonna do an agent.move, and I'm gonna tell him to go forward five blocks. Okay, agent.move forward five blocks. And remember, this is a chat command that runs from tower. Okay, so if I push play right now, what I'm gonna hopefully have is every time I open up my chat command and type in tower, my little agent will appear right in front of me. There is, there he is. Okay, and he's gonna to start to tell uh, to make those bricks. It might have been a bit quick, so I'll just show you again. When I have a tower, you can see that he's building those blocks. And I can go back into my code and I can make him build a little bit more than that. Instead of say five blocks, I might make him build, you know, 12 blocks. If I push play, open up my chat command and type tower again, now he's gonna start building 12 blocks. And he's placing it for me and doing a very nice, very nice job. 
Okay, but I don't want to build just a straight random wall. I want him to actually start building the tower for me. So for that, we're going to go back into the code. I'm going to delete that line for now because I want to actually add it into a different section of my code. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to tell the agent to do two things. We need to tell him to walk forward and then turn left. Now, if we can get him to walk forward and turn left, theoretically, he's going to place everything behind him and then turn left. And if we can then tell that code to appear four times or to occur four times, he should actually map out a square. And then because he's placing every time it moves, it's going to map out a square for us of blocks. Okay. After that, we have to put in a third command, which says to move up and start again. So after you've done a square, you're going to move up and you're going to draw another square. Then you're going to move up and you're going to draw, construct another square. And we can repeat that 10 times. So we've got a square that's 10 blocks high. Okay, so here's how we do it. We need to use two loops this time. And we're going to use another for loop. It's the one that we used last lesson. We're going to do a for loop that starts with another uh, let, I, oops, let i equal to zero. We're going to make it go, as I said, up to 10 blocks. Whoops, I don't know why that came out as a capital up to 10 blocks and I++ plus plus, so that we know that he's going to move up 10 blocks. Open up your parentheses, uh, your braces, I beg your pardon. Okay, and now as I said, you need to have a second command. You need to have a second loop that tells it how to do the square. Okay, you could just tell it to do a, do a walk forward, turn left, walk forward, turn left, walk forward, turn left, walk forward, turn left. But it is much better, more elegant code to have the same lines just repeat when you don't need to duplicate it over and over again. So we're going to do that again with another for loop. Let i equal zero. I, whoops, again, uppercase. I less than four, because there's only four sides to a square. And i plus plus. Okay, and open your braces one more time. Now I'm purposely push that thing a little bit further forward. Now that helps us to, um, to see where we're going with which parts of which code are going in. Uh, you'll also notice that there's an empty space, empty line in between these two braces. I've done that on purpose, okay, and you'll see why um, after I've done these next ones. Okay, so in this command here, inside this loop, this is how we're going to tell the instructions to the agent on how to perform the square. Now, if you remember I said we're going to tell him to walk forward and then turn left. Not move left, just walk forward and then turn left. Okay, so... Walking is pretty easy, it's just a, a movement command, agent.move, then you've got the option to go forward, and we're going to make him go five blocks forward, okay? After that, we're going to make him turn, and we're going to make him turn to the left side, so turn direction dot left, okay? So now, that because that line, that two lines of code is in the loop that has a four counter up to four times, that code move forward turn left is going to occur four times and theoretically that should perfect make him map out a perfect square after we've done that square you're going to have to make him go up and then repeat the previous thing which is going to make it do that loop from making the square so we need to have another command which tells the agent to move up Okay, and we only need to go up one block because we want to do it above that situation. Okay, above that previous square. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got the agent moving forward, then turning left, uh, repeating that four times to make a square, then you move up. And we repeat the entire thing all over again. So another four, square, four turns to make another square and move up. Then we repeat it again. So another four turns and movements to make another square and then we move up. And that's going to happen 10 times. Okay, so let's click play and see how our code looks. I'm going to move just a little bit further away from that previous code there. Open up my chat command, type in tower, and ideally what I've got to have now is my little agent's going to move up and he's going to start creating that square for me. Okay, sometimes I think you might find that he's got that little empty spot there. That's probably because I was just standing there at that moment. Okay, that's nothing to worry about right now. I could rerun the code and just make sure I wasn't in his way. Okay, the second thing I want to point out now is notice how as he gets to the end of the, end of the loop, he actually destroys the first block from the previous uh, square. Now that's important because otherwise he's going to crash into it and stop working. 
Now that's where right at the beginning of the lesson I said you've got to make sure that he's destroying any other obstacles in his way, otherwise he's going to stop inside that square and he's going to start turning earlier than he should. Okay, so guys, that's the code to get him to create your little tower. You can see we've got him placing on move, destroying the obstacles, with replacing them with sandstone, and we've got the use of two loops this time, um, making him go forward, left, and up. Okay, uh, I challenge you guys to try to do a lot of different things. You know, for example, instead of using sandstone, we might want to try and build the, the new tower out of glass. Okay, and I'll just move further back and I'll get him to drop down. Okay, if I open up my chat command and type it again, this time what he's going to start doing is building it out of glass for me. Okay, so if you can figure out how to make it even more advanced, maybe you might make, build it so that you've got a red row, then a green row, then a yellow row, then a blue row. Okay, you want to have a rainbow tower example. Uh, you might want to have it so that you've got um, something a bit more fun built into each level. Okay, but you can modify that as, you, as, um, as much as you want. Make it so the square is bigger, make it so the tower is taller. If you, do, if you put it in really high, so your tower is now going to 100 blocks high, you might be sitting there for a while waiting for him to finish. Okay. However, if you do open Code Builder, anytime you do that, the command will actually stop executing. He's not going to keep working anymore. Okay, so guys, thank you very much for today. That's the end of lesson, the second half of lesson one, your agent tower. Um, by all means, do your experiments and have a go at your activities. Take care.